Welcome to Rhythm and Roads, everyone. I'm your host, Joshua Jacob. We have a very special guest, Martin Page. It's a songwriter, musician, producer, and he's actually worked with a lot of greats. He's worked with Phil Collins. He's worked with Brian Ferry and even Hart. So welcome, sir. Welcome and uh, to you as well. It's great to be here. Right. That's actually a really good album. Uh, what inspired you. you? Yeah. Well, like what inspired you to want to write that album? Um, uh, I'd been uh, involved as a songwriter for many artists for a long period of time in Los Angeles from the 80s onwards. And I was working with uh, Earth, Wind & Fire and oh, Robbie wow. Robert Yeah, and Robbie Robertson um, of the band fame. And I was doing demos with them. And both Maurice White and Robbie Robertson said, you know, we love your demos. We love the way you sing. Yeah. Why haven't you Why haven't you done your own thing? So it was a bit late in my career. I mean, it was, you know, I was getting on it in the years for usually when a person would make a solo record. But I'd also been writing with Bernie Taupin. We'd had uh, two hits. We built the city in these dreams. And Again, when I did my demos of these songs, um, okay. I made I made many records and I sang them. So all these people, Bernie, Taupin, Maurice White and uh, uh, Robbie Robertson, they sort of said, do your own thing. And I felt like I was ready then. So I, I wanted to make a, a truthful record. Um, okay. And here in my home studio, I'd seen how Robbie Robertson was doing his album at the, at the Village Recorders in Los Angeles, which was very much hands on and homemade. So I made that record. Uh, Mercury Record signed me, and um, oh wow! I, yeah, I spent about a about a year really try, uh, bringing in the, the musicians I tr I cherished and who I'd worked with before, and I I tried to make a spiritual record. I tried to make a record that I could stat that would transcend time, and as right. time went on, it, uh, fashion wouldn't dictate its strength. So. Um, it's it's been out there for thirty years now, and it has. Um, yeah, congrats on uh, that. Nearly, nearly as old as me, nearly, <laughs> nearly. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, I came across the in the house of stone and light when I bought the album back in. For me, I actually bought it first time hearing it was in probably like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. Wow! Um, and I came across it, and I was just like, "This is really." I'm very a big fan of Sting, and yeah. the Police. So this had a bit of in, like inspiration from that. I feel. That was like yeah. very similar. And I was like, this has a really good sound to it. Your voice. I mean, the songwriting was incredible. So that's a really good. Album. Thank you very much, Josh. I appreciate that. I mean, my heritage coming from England was um, choral music. And again, uh, Genesis, Peter Gabriel, the oh, early. Yeah. And um, that music, um, although it was progressive music and I was a pop writer, I think it really inf uh, infiltrated my idea of how I was going to make this record. I mean, you know, it's a, it's an era now, isn't it, Joshua, where, where you get a feeling that there's not it's not so album oriented. But back then and uh, and in the 70s, when I grew up, I really thought albums were important. They were like books. Oh, each yeah. song, each song had to move on to the next song the way they were constructed together. Right. So uh, that was still the era of the album. And um, okay. I made that, I made that record thinking of um, the kind of albums I loved when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, and which albums were they that you loved when you were a kid? Oh, I mean, I was a record fanatic, so I bought everything on vinyl. Still have them up, up in the loft here. I still have the albums. Do you really? Um, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a, a vinyl fanatic. But I was, that's, that vinyl records were my friends. I mean, I was, as a young lad, I, I left um, England a few times to be with my father in America because he worked on the American air bases with the Harrier Jump Jet. And oh, so wow. I was, I was, I was moving around America at quite a young age, and I was missing my friends. So buying records and listening to records was really my best mate, my best friend. Oh, wow. And so the, you know, uh, lucky to work with Bernie Taupin later in the years, but Elton John's records albums, uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, Abbey Road by the Beatles. Oh no way! Okay. Selling England by the Pound by yeah. Genesis, um, Catch a Fire by Bob Marley. I love reggae. Oh, really? uh, the Who, Quadrophenia. So I was a fanatic. I mean, and I still am. Yeah. So, in a way, when I when I sat down to do House of Stone and Light, I think I was fortunate, uh, Joshua, because I was doing it at a later stage, and it was something um, where I felt like I'm not. It isn't fashion conscious. It's just what I want to do. Yeah. I felt like my voice was coming into a, a strong place. Um, 
I wanted to make an album and an album to me was a book, you know, there are 10 songs yeah. and they, and they tell a story. I grew up on that kind of stuff. Nice. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that part. You know, I'm really interested to hear your story of how you became a musician, a songwriter. Is it, is, does it run in the family or do you actually just like, it's just something that caught your interest after listening to so much great music. You're like, I want to write an album. I want to sing. And yeah, you know, I think that's a great question because, um, I, it really wasn't in my family that I knew about. I mean, maybe, maybe right back with grandfathers, maybe there's something, grandmothers, maybe there's something going on. But my mother and father, my father was a technician working for British Aerospace and NASA. And my mother were, loved music, though. She was just a housewife, but she loved music. So I think my my vibe of falling in love with music was brought on by my mother buying records herself. Oh, and we're, to, we're talking um 50 the 1950s so she started to bring in um from 33 uh shellac records into when vinyl 45 started so i was hearing Volare, da, da, all, these Itali <laughs> all these italian records oh, and and big band records and she was a big frank sinatra record but what i noticed josh what what hit me was that when music was played in the house um everybody was happy and and if there was you know arguments or life was tough when anybody put the record on or played music, I just sort of thought, God, everybody's smiling and they're dancing and it's magic. <laughs> it's magic. And so I used to pick up the vinyl record and think this is an amazing technology because oh. from this little piece of plastic yeah. that a needle falls on, people's characters and their emotions change. That's right. And that it was, was the magical side of it. And so although at 16 I was going to be a soccer player playing football in Southampton, music, oh, wow. Motown and the Beatles, they were on the radio and on the TV. And I started to fall in love with the power of music around that time. Okay. Yeah, and I read that you're from, um, is it London? Or... No, I'm from Southampton. I'm down on the coast. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down in the Docklands of Southampton, um, where the Titanic came from. I wasn't on the are Titanic. You oh wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, the, my, I was going to be working at the docks. That's where my family oh, okay. usually went. But I was lucky to escape that and go to art college and um, put the grant that I got from art college, the yeah. money they gave you, into buying a guitar, a bass guitar. Oh. So my main instrument is bass guitar. Bass, yeah. That's yeah, and then I moved to London from Southampton because just like in America, you have to go to New York, L.A. or Nashville. Right. For us in England, you had to be in London. And eventually I settled in London, met a, a Scottish guitarist called Brian Fairweather, and we formed a band called Qfield. Uh, we made a record which was in the 80s, which was like um, Ultravox and Thompson Twins. Oh, it wow. broke big, Yeah, it broke big in the L.A., and that's what brought me to America, really, because that um, that record was very big in Los Angeles, Dancing in Heaven, Orbital Bebop. And then I, it was the right time to come, Josh, because all the artists in the 80s were looking to change their sound. And we were using synthesizers, oh. and uh, that was a new sound in those days. Yeah. That was I our love, call. I love bands there with synthesizers. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm still Grand playing with them. The yeah. 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 The Eno, um, Kraftwerk. Oh, yeah. It, it goes on and on. Yeah, yeah. So have you you actually worked with Brian Ferry? No, my Brian Ferry cut one of my songs. I noticed oh, you I said did. that on the intro. Yeah, I had a song that I wrote with Bernie Taupin to, to your fans. Bernie is usually the uh, lyricist for Elton John. Okay. And we, we wrote a song called Dance With Life, The Brilliant Light, and it was for the movie Phenomenon, John Travolta's film. Oh, okay. And um, Trevor Horn, the famous English producer, he produced it, and uh, Brian Ferry sang it. And wow. I'm a, I was a fan. I was a fan of um, Brian Ferry's work, you know, right back at the beginning of, the, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. And and when he was, uh, you know, doing songs like Virginia Plain and uh, oh, yeah. in, in the band. Uh, so it was a thrill that he did it. In fact, um, that song was first going to be, I, I can't remember the artist, but it wasn't going to be Brian Ferry. Um, and so I was thrilled when Brian Ferry did it because I, I grew up on that era as well. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And then yeah. you had to associate with your music as well was with Phil Collins. He had a bit well, of Well, Phil, Phil, yeah, Phil Collins. I mean, I was a big fan of Genesis. And, yeah. Um, on this album, In the House of Stone and Light, yeah. um, Phil, Phil Collins played drums on two of the tracks. You and did. so. Uh, oh, well, that's awesome. 
Wow. Yeah, he played on he played on um, Light in Your Heart, and he played on the um, overdubs on Shape the Invisible. Okay. The other drum the other drummer on the album was Jimmy Copley, who was the drummer with um, Tears for Fears. Uh, oh wow! And, okay. and Jeff Beck. I was very fortunate to get the musicians I'd always loved and I'd worked with around the edges on different projects. When I said I'm making my own record, they all said, "Yeah, we have to pay us a lot to play on your record." <laughs> so. so <laughs> but they, they did eventually agree to do it. And I met Phil Collins in a restaurant, and I was a fan of Genesis. I just walked up to him and said, hey, Phil, uh, I'm making a record. And um, I worked with Earth, Wind & Fire. And he goes, I love Earth, Wind & Fire. And I said, the Scottish band, the Blue Nile, are involved. And, he, of course, I didn't know, but the Blue Nile were a band that he loved as well. So I sort of tempted him in with my history and who was playing on the record. And he was a wonderful guy to work oh, with. Wow. I, mean, I bet he was, yeah. As a kid, I'd um, watched Genesis tour England with the Selling England by the Pound tour. And I remember st staying up all night and lining up outside the Gaumont Theatre in Southampton to see Genesis. And oh, I was a kid. Oh. And so to have to see Phil Collins playing in the studio through the glass on my song, it was quite, how, how the hell did I catch up? How the, <laughs> I was a kid. Now that I'm was, catching up. Wow. That what was an pretty experience, good. right? To have someone you saw when you were a kid. Oh, yeah playing a track on your song it's in the studio yeah. that's amazing yeah it was you know peter gabriel also um sang on one of the songs i wrote for robbie with robbie robertson fallen yeah. angel a solo record and of course working with maurice white and earth wind and fire again yeah i was i was a kid playing their music earth wind and fire songs um in a band in bristol and oxford as a kid so you know and then all of a sudden you're in the studio with them i just seen them play at wembley live Oh, you did? Within two, okay. And within two weeks, I'd come to America and I was in the studio with him. So it was a bit like going down the rabbit hole. It was uh, still pretty amazing that all that came together for me. Wow. That's amazing. And yeah. I read that you had a, so you kind of helped out or did hard help you out in some way with the song? No, no, no. I wrote These Dreams for Heart. Oh, you um, did? You wrote These Dreams. Okay. Yeah, I wrote These Dreams for Bernie. That's an incredible song. I got to say, <laughs> what a great Thank song. Thank you. Yeah, Bernie gave me the lyric for that and it was initially written for stevie nicks of fleetwood mac and uh, she passed on it oh, and okay then then hart heard it because i was working with their produce their keyboard player peter wolf yeah. and just before that with bernie i'd written we built the city for starship so we had two very big hits early on which um encouraged us you know got us going but no hart hart I didn't know Heart. They just took the song. I think it was their third single and it was their first number one. So it was an unusual song to be number one, really, because it's a bit like a an emotional mid-tempo orchestra maneuvers in the dark spiritual hymn. It does, that's how, it does have that feel. Yeah. That's, that's how I wrote it. Yeah, like a um like a hymn in a way. Yeah, it is. Going back to your album in the House of Stone and Light, I gotta say one song I really have on repeat a lot is the Put on Your Red Dress. Oh, yeah. That's a yeah, good that's I, I've awesome been, song. Go I've on. been hearing that a lot, Josh. It's strange. Um, it's 30 years anniversary. A lot of the supporters of mine and fans wrote to me, and, and it, a lot of their comments um, yeah. were about Put On Your Red Dress, like that was their favorite song. <laughs> and in fact, it was a single in Germany, um, but we wish now, we wish in hindsight that it was maybe the third single on this album. It could have even been the second, but okay. um, it was one of our favorite songs to play live as well. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I mean, just listening to it, I love the the way that it sounds, the instruments, the lyrics itself. It just moves me a lot. I love it. I mean, it's Thank you. well written. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate that. So with your... I a journey t-shirt that's on the right day. yes sir i'm a big fan of i work i worked with um the keyboard player from journey oh um, uh, uh, Neil, uh john Jonathan king yeah we, we, we wrote two songs together one for a movie called sing and, oh, and um oh, okay. he, here in the studio and also uh, bad english john john wait um, right. okay we wrote a song together and um yeah he was here again another one of those people you watch on the stage and then all of a sudden you're oh you're God. jamming in a studio to, together you go how did that happen right um, you're like wait is this real like that's so awesome I'm still still slapping myself <laughs> still slapping. and here i am with you josh i mean how did this all happen right i'm just like you know and the thing is how it came <laughs> with us is i you know i've been playing your music every now and then i've been listening to the greats and i came up i remember oh, i remember the martin page album the house of stone and light and then i just started looking up 
I, your page on Instagram and, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to send an email or a message and see what happens. And, and here we yeah. are. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. I, I, missed you, I missed your message for a while. And then I suddenly discovered it and thought, yeah, yeah, let's go forward and do this. Cause I've got a, I've got a new album that I've been uh, actually recorded with the same musicians of House of Stone and Light. Oh, is that right? And okay. Awesome. It's a kindred, it's a kindred spirit album to that album. I think okay. it's in many ways, the, the next stage of what House of Stone and Light was because it is the most of the same musicians. And I'm hoping to release that um, beginning of next year. Beginning of next year. Oh, wow. That's going to be called the first and last freedom. And, uh, I know everybody says things like this, like, no, this is my best album ever. But uh, <laughs> I'll say it. I think it is the strongest work I've ever done. Yeah. And is this album being created in your own studio or where you where are you recording? Well, it, was that, it was done in a multiple studios because I was oh. able, as I said, to use some of the musicians, uh, Bill Dillon from Canada, the guitarist, Russell Broom from Canada, yeah. uh, Bruno, keyboard, uh, PJ Moore. You'll see them on House of Stone and Light. Um, okay. And Ray Parker, the guitarist, um, uh, played on it. I worked on Ghostbusters. I was the keyboard player on Ghostbusters. So. Are you serious? You mean no, like no. you think the theme song? Yeah. My, my, oh, my, wow. my, me and my uh, partner, we came into L.A. again within about three weeks. My manager uh, got me to meet Ray Parker, and he said, come in the studio and listen to what I'm doing. And all we heard was, who are you going to call? And we thought, what's this? He goes, plug in your guitars, plug in your keyboards. I'm going to lunch. You do the work. We, wow. we jammed on it and he came back he said i love it so um again all that time onwards i went to see ray recently and he said i'd love to play on you your, your new record to pay you back right, okay for what you did on ghostbusters which was fun yeah so are you so you're telling me you're the one who thought of the idea for the keyboards for the theme for ghostbusters not the theme i mean i just played keyboards well, i mean it. the keyboards but you did you think yeah of the idea for yeah that? we made it up on the spot i mean uh, ray, awesome. ray had the track ray had the right track. right bubbling but he said i i know brian you play guitar my partner and i know martin you do these keyboards this strange english kind of stuff and he was into the english sound of um trevor horn at that time frankie goes to hollywood uh, oh, okay. owner, yeah. owner of a lonely heart by yes so he said do yeah. something like that on this film song we didn't even really know what it what we were doing and he we were nervous because we he left us on our own with the engineer and we put all these overdubs on and then he, I had a little small Casio keyboard, and he said, "Make me some ghost noises and play, make weird music." And that was used in the film, actually. Oh, when wow. uh, uh, Sergio, I think it was um, the the sexy scene where the female is lying and the uh, and the ghost is coming over her. Oh yeah, all, all those keyboard sounds were me doodling. So oh, oh. we didn't know what the track was. He just said it's for a movie about ghosts. Yeah, yeah. Then about again a month later, it was number one in the American charts, and we were like quite amazed because we thought we didn't know what we were doing and yet we're on a number one single how strange right that's <laughs> awesome and, and it's very catchy with keys on that song i love it oh yeah, yeah well that's a mixture of me and ray uh okay. ray did a lot of work but he just wanted me to give all the colors to it and play certain lines and uh he liked our english sound because my first band were called q feel okay that's the that's the band I came over with. And we had a hit called Dancing in Heaven at that time when Ghostbusters was coming out. And he'd heard, Ray Parker had heard our song, Dancing in Heaven by Q-Feel on the radio. And it was in a movie, Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Okay. And so he, he heard that high tech sound of ours. And he said, um, I'd like a bit of that on this uh, film song. Um, so that's how uh, magic, gets, magic gets made, I suppose. And Ray is such an easygoing guy. Um, and I didn't really, you know, I loved his band Radio. Remember Radio, Jack and Jill, the soul band? Um, so that's what I was into when I met him. But if you listen to Ray Parker's session work as a guitarist, um, he played Stevie Wonder, Toto, Bat Boss Gags. So when he played on my album this time, I was sort of looking going, I never knew really how absolutely brilliant he was. He's a great guitarist, oh. great rhythm guitarist, funk guitarist. Yeah. yeah. And a lovely man, lovely man. Oh, I bet. And when, yeah. when you push his doorbell, at his house, you're going to hear, who are you going to call? <laughs> I swear. That right? That, yeah, that's his doorbell. So you go, wow. like, oh, we're going, to, we're coming to the Ghostbusters house. <laughs> the Ghostbusters <laughs> mansion, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. So back to what you just mentioned about that band you were with, um, Q Feel? Q Feel, yeah, capital yeah. Q and Feel, yeah. Dancing in Heaven or something, what is it called? Dancing in Heaven, Orbital yeah, People. I think I, I remember seeing the music video, right? Isn't it? You guys are like in, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, oh, no way. Is that because I yeah, watched yeah. I mean, it's it, a catchy we, song. I'm like, that's a cool yeah. song. We did. Uh, it was a big it was a it was a big underground hit. In OK. America. And um, a, a cult record. We performed it live on the Euro English Eurovision Song Contest. And that's where that video wow. comes from. Because okay. we didn't, we 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 really didn't want to do the Eurovision Song Contest back then. We thought, now nah, that's a bit not our not our vibe. But we said we'll do it if we're allowed to be crazy. Yeah. And so we thought of the the American band, the Tubes. That's why I'm dressed up strange. That's why you've got the Space Girls. That's why <laughs> you've got, you've got the guys dressed up like Kraftwerk, you know, with the microphone. Oh, oh. So we we thought we would do something on Eurovision totally different. Little did we know that that record would start to move big in California in the 80s. Yeah. It was when everybody was working out, you know, so it was yeah. uh, let's be physical time. So Dancing in Heaven was a big workout record. <laughs> it is pretty. I mean, I can see why it would be a workout song. I mean, it's very fast paced and high energy, high energy. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the days when our tempos were 120 beats per minute. <laughs> I even thinking about that record now, oh, I get out of man. breath. I get out of breath. <laughs> that's a that's a fast record. <laughs> that's funny. So, yeah. Martin, tell me a little bit about your new album coming out. Like, what inspired you to write this new album? Like, is there some been some family stuff going on or life experiences? Something like what it was? Yeah, this is new album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you always you never know where inspiration is going to come from or what when a record starting for me or what um it, it's all a little bit mysterious but the drummer that played on in the house of stone and light we okay. were just talking about him jimmy copley yeah. i'd arranged for him to come across to play with me in america again um oh. because i'd learned that he had leukemia oh. and um I thought, well, let's let's um, get him across as he gets a bit better, healthier. Let's bring him across. I'm a bass player. He's a drummer. We have a great magic between us. And um, I said, and, and so his his girlfriend said he's in hospital in London. And what would lift his spirits is if you wrote some songs for him to listen to, to get him out of hospital, get him out of hospital to prepare him. Yeah. So I wrote these three initial songs just for Jimmy to get him out of the hospital. And um he was it did do the job it brought him out and he started to rehearse and i didn't think i was making a record and unfortunately jimmy succumbed to the illness mm -hmm. uh without and sent me a message saying i'm not going to beat this and it was very moving he was very brave very strong and um i was i i felt like this is meant to be i need to finish these three songs and then the guitarist that i was close to in wang chung jack hughes the lead singer okay. he'd been on house of stone and light and his wife had just passed oh. and he was in la and i said come on over and jam let's just play on these three tracks that i've written yeah. for jimmy um and things started to sort of just follow and neil taylor the guitarist from tears for fears he came okay. into town all oh. these players that were involved with house of stone and light so it was meant to be and oh. so Everything i didn't want to play i didn't yeah, I didn't realize it, Josh, but when people were hearing the songs, they were saying, this is your best work. I said, well, they're, they're written to get somebody out of hospital. They're a special message. Um, and so the record formed from, uh, in a way, a tribute to the, Jimmy Copley and my friendship. Yeah, and uh, I, I had to see it through. It took me a while because COVID came in and, um, and it took me five years to knock it in the shape. We were going to do live drums. And when we didn't have Jimmy, my old drummer from q -Phil, Trevor Thornton, he came in to do the drums, which was wonderful. Brian came involved to do, you know, played on Ghostbusters. He came around me. Then Ray Parker came around me. Wow. Then we then we sent some one song called Breathe In My Heart to um, South Africa to have a Zulu choir sing on it. So the album started to form. It's called The First and Last Freedom. And to me, it's um, The First and Last Freedom. To me, the first was music. That saved my life. And I'm sure I'm sure my last freedom in this world will be music. So I felt I feel like I've made, even though I've made ten other albums in between House of Stone and Light and this one, yeah. this with the same players again feels very special to me. And I wanted to do it the prop the right way. So we're we're doing them, you know, CDs and yeah. special booklets and the whole thing. Um, I know. Yeah, I'm, very, I'm you know at my late stage, I'm more, I'm ex I'm as excited about this record because of its motivation. Mm. from where it started from which was trying to heal my my friends my band members okay. we jammed we i wrote songs to get them out of their their grief and okay. their illness and so um 
that's why the record re remains very big to me in my heart because um, it was constructed as House of Stone and Light was for restoration and healing. Yeah. Wow, that's that's such an incredible like view on what you just said. The fact that this album, this new one coming out, was inspired to help your friend in the hospital just to be yeah. relieved from this, and that's incredible. Yeah. That that now that you, I can see why it's taking well, it's taking like what a while, right, to get this song. I mean, the album. Oh, this album took a long time, and yeah. and in fact, we're we're quite ready to go. Right. Um, okay. I, I don't know when this podcast is coming out, but um. You know, we were going to release in November, but that's right when the uh, elections take place. So we thought, well, let's let's let the air clear, let everybody go into the, you know, get through this period because we do yeah. want to release the record um, with everybody's attention um, a little bit away from the political um, maelstrom at the moment. Uh, wow. it, but it did take me about five years. Um, five years. I've, I've actually written an essay in the album on, on the CD booklet because, it, as I said to you, you've heard the story really for the first time that uh, Jimmy, the getting Jimmy Copley out of hospital wow. and his bravery and his courage um, motivated the songs. And that's awesome. Really, really, when I think about it, your songwriting for me, even when I first started, was as a, an escape. You know, music, I get lost when I'm writing songs or yeah. for me. Yeah. So to me, music has always been a sign of um, a higher place of release. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. I'm really looking forward to hearing the, when do you have your new uh, single coming out later this year from the new Well, I, I, it's a time when there's not really, singles aren't quite as important, but we're doing the teasers now. And there's okay. one song which um, is called Courage, which is based on, what Jimmy went through, and that probably will be our lead-off single, or at least it'll be the track that people okay. can can get first, and then get the album to them after. That's where we're looking at it. It's, but you know, for me, really, it's a strange thing. But I feel like there's four to five singles off of this. But that's me, you know, looking back to if I'd re released this record in the '90s, I'd have thought that because I've made a record here with the live players, which isn't really trying to follow any fashion sense of what's happening now it's about performances it's about the players the musicians that's really i wanted people to perform um their ability as soulful players that's what we've gone for that's awesome and i actually agree because me i love david bowie brian yeah Hardy, i mean genesis even the old back in the 78 genesis but like you know to hear those bands back then that were all full bands that each one had its own part um yeah no, I mean, that's that's something I'm really big on. And when you hear every instrument, I mean, they have their own story, you know, their own journey. And you're like, it's just that's yeah. awesome that you want to involve that into your new album. Just make sure everyone has their part as a musician. Yeah. You know, it's 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 great what you say there, Josh, because, again, we're talking about, you know, the era of albums and bands having concepts and and yeah. Yeah. and not just, you know, a, a download, a download, a download. We, I, okay. I've always been a great believer in albums being if you love an album, it's one thing. It's, it's not just the single. It's the whole entity. Yeah, and, right. and, um, and that's ingrained into me. And luckily, all the players that yeah. were involved um that's where that's their heritage as well so even oh. for me I, I was a bit of a fan of it because i it, through covid i was sending tracks to canada south africa oh. scotland scotland and these guys were working on the stuff and sending it back and i was like a fan i was going like this is brilliant yeah that's awesome how yeah. do i lay this in the track and so uh, <laughs> there was a lot and and all the all the players sort of um grew up with me you know through yeah. our period of the 80s and the 90s so it, it's a, a soulful thing um yeah. and i feel like i'm singing uh in a different way i'm not singing different but i'm singing from because it was to do with jimmy and healing and right. jack my friends i think i was singing i'm singing in a place where i'm outside myself a little bit i'm, I'm yeah. I, my manager has been saying some of these vocals um you must keep the first vocals you sing you know the first time you do a take there's something right. special so i think Vocally as well, I'm 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 more proud of this record than anything I've done. Do you already have a title for it, or not yet? Yeah, the album is called "The First and Last Freedom." Like oh, that's I said, okay. the first free the first freedom in my life was music, oh, okay. and the last freedom, you know, I'm sure when I'm about to kick the bucket, I'll say, "Play me some music." So, <laughs> While you're heading out, uh... <laughs> <laughs> play me some music before yeah. I go. 
So the first uh, and last freedom to me was that's a good uh, title. I like that. When, yeah. when I was a ch- when I was a kid, music was my escape. You know, I, if the family was arguing, I'd have the headphones on, and music would help me out. And even now, I find music to be something we can't explain. Right. It is incredibly spiritual to me, and yeah. so my la- I'm sure my last freedom in life will be still connected to the art of music somehow. Yeah, you know? somehow. that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Martin, for coming on Rhythm and Roads and sharing your story. Just you know, the story behind your new album coming out, just the fact that it's based on inspiration for your friend, that it's inspired for him to get healing and just to get out of the hospital. Like, wow, that's yeah. I'm looking forward to hearing that album just to know that it's inspired. I'll, I'll get I'll get one to you, Josh. Oh, sure. thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it only cost you $19.50 because you're a friend. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that, that <laughs> friend discount there. <laughs> Oh, Martin, you know, and, and that's the thing of why I do Rhythm and Roads. I've been doing this almost a year already. Yeah, I saw some of your shows and congratulations on what oh. you're doing. I know you've got a spiritual element oh, to, yeah. Your, yeah. To, to your shows. And I know the House of Stone and Light, my album, did um, communicate to a lot of people in different religions and Christian and right across. Yeah, yeah. And that, was, that was the place I was uh, that I come from as well. But I know with your shows that uh, you're you're there to lift people, which is great. That is, yes. And I'm here to inspire. And the reason why behind this is because your story inspires other musicians, other artists that want to hear and say, you know what, if he can do it, I can do it. If he's a great songwriter, I can do that too. I mean, you know, we all need to be inspired by other people's stories, other musicians, Absolutely. other artists. Absolutely. That's the key. And I think that that is the key. You have to be turned on. You have to be inspired. And um, other musicians did it to me when I was young. You yeah. know, I was looking at Pete Townsend and Eric Clapton and, and I'm thinking, I've got to do a bit of that. That looks fun. Yeah. That looks- <laughs> That's good. That beat. And, and, and it's cool that you're a bass player. Like, I'm a drummer oh. myself. I'm a drummer. But, ah. but to play the bass is another section close to playing drums because you're going with the beat. You know what I mean? You're oh, yeah. Your- your own rhythm on that. So the, the rhythm section, the drums and the bass. Right. That's the heartbeat. That's the That's skeleton the of the body. Yeah. That is where everything is built upon that. That's so, right. You have to be six foot two to be a bass player. I'm <laughs> sat down now, but I am much taller. Than oh this. my god, look at that. Six two, ladies. <laughs> really? That's six so good. Two. <laughs> yeah, don't hit your head now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh, uh, for a great interview. I appreciate it. Oh man, it's been such a pleasure having you on. It was great just to hear some of the stories behind the House of Stone and Light. And I really look forward. To it. And if you and for the viewers to hear Martin Page's music, it's all on on the streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube Music. So definitely check him out and keep updated on his music. So, well, thank you, Martin, again, for coming on Rhythm and Roads podcast. It's been such a pleasure. Pleasure as well, Josh. Keep doing the good work. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode.